Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. I'm gonna be taking you on a little plant tour of all of my Hoyas. Pretty much all of my Hoyas live on this shelf over here and I have literally not moved them from their spot since I moved into this apartment like a year and a half ago. I do not consider myself like a hardcore Hoya head, Hoya collector or anything like that. Um, I just have a couple of varieties. Actually, when I first started getting into plants, I really, really didn't see the appeal of Hoyas. I remember seeing Hoyas on social media all the time and not really being very impressed with them. I never really used to see them in plant shops and stuff too often, except for maybe like the plain green Carnosa. But I remember the first time I saw in person the Hoya Crimson Queen, which was the first like Hoya I ever paid attention to and the very first one I bought, which is all the way in this corner over here. And I was instantly in love. <laughs> I don't know what it, what it is about seeing a Hoya in person, but the sturdiness and the thickness of the leaves um, totally won me over the first time I was able to actually touch one. The plant that I happened to find had an entirely white variegated tendril on it. Like one of the vines had pure white leaves, which at the time, I don't think I realized that that wasn't necessarily gonna be a good thing for the plant because it's harder for plants to maintain pure white foliage. Um, but I was just so excited when I found it. After that, I started collecting them a little bit more because I started to see the appeal. And these days I haven't really gotten super into collecting them, but it's one of my guilty pleasures to go on Etsy and to fill up my cart with Hoya cuttings that I never order. Okay, we've got a little bit of camera inception going on over here. So I've got my, my phone on my little tripod and I'm gonna just turn around and start showing you my Hoyas. So I've got this plant shelf system over here and over here are some southwest facing windows. So it's very bright and I've got my Hoyas on mainly these three top shelves plus some over there. So I can just go in and show you. So this plant in the corner here, um, that's vining down and kind of going up. This is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen and it was the first Hoya I ever got. So it's in this six inch nursery pot back here. It's a variegated variety of the plain Hoya Carnosa and it has the white margin, leaf margin. So the white is on the outer edge of the leaves and the little stems, the new stems before they harden off are a really cute pink color and it's just a really beautiful plant. So this vine that I was just showing you is the vine that I mentioned that has all white leaves. So it goes up there and then it comes around back here and it's continued growing these white leaves. And it was actually only just a few weeks ago that the older leaves on that vine have started to kind of turn brown and shrivel up. We had a little bit of a heat wave here in San Francisco. Um, it got way warmer for like two weeks than it normally ever does. And I think my Hoyas kind of could have used a little bit more water. Um, and I think I started to lose some of these white leaves, but I'm not too concerned about it. But anyway, yeah, so this Hoya, the Crimson Queen, it's vining down, it's growing down here, it's coming back up around, <laughs> it's wrapping all around here. And see this vine, where does this vine even go? Wow, this vine is so long. It's going all the way up there, <laughs> growing back in the corner of the wall and popping out all the way up over here. So, I don't know if you can see that, but it starts down there and it comes all the way up over there. Just a note about Hoya cultivation. When I first got this Crimson Queen, I did all this research and read all of these people's warnings about how you really, really shouldn't overwater a Hoya. That's like the, the death blow. And so I really, really took it to heart and pretty much never watered it. And it didn't grow for like many, many months, six, eight months. I had absolutely no new growth on the plant. I didn't have any die off or any signs that there was anything bad happening to the plant, but I also had no new growth. And once I actually realized that I should water my plant, like when it dries out, surprise, they grow. <laughs> it was surprising to me anyway, because I thought maybe they were just never gonna change. Um, but once I started watering it more regularly, it exploded with growth. And then I started to buy some more Hoyas because it started to feel rewarding to care for it. Um, but 
the flip side of that is if you go away on vacation or something like that and need to leave your plants, Hoyas are probably going to be fine. I mean, if they're used to re very, very regular care, any plant is going to have a little bit of a harder time acclimating to more drought-like conditions. But in general, Hoyas are really good at just not growing and conserving the resources that they have, which is what makes them a really easy plant. So anyway, let us continue. So we took a look at this Hoya carnosa back here, the Crimson Queen, and it goes up there. And then we can take a look at what I've got on this upper shelf. So I've just got this Hoya carnosa compacta. So this is another variety of the Hoya carnosa, which I keep mentioning, but I don't have. It's just, it looks a lot like this Hoya Crimson Queen, but with no white on it. Um, but this version is called the Hindu rope and it's really crinkled up and it's got these leaves that if they were unfolded they would look like a normal leaf but they curl up into this shape it just is really interesting actually I never was attracted to this plant at all I didn't like it and never intended to get one but one time when I was ordering some plants there was a seller that was selling like little cuttings of them for not too much that I just added onto my order so when I first got it this plant was only like it was like this tall and it was just a tiny little nub sticking out of this nursery pot. And I've never repotted it um, or propagated it. So it's just this one long rope. And a few months ago, it fell off this shelf. I had it hanging down and it got too heavy. So I, I curled it back up over here. I mean, it, it crashed to the ground and it was fine. <laughs> I was really worried about it, but it didn't take any damage, it seems like, so I've got that there. And then over here, I've got this Hoya australis, and this plant could be doing better. So this this is a burn, and I've got some of these leaves on here that are kind of burnt, and it's because, um, let me see if I can show you from this angle. You can maybe see this vine sticks out further than the rest of most of my Hoyas and it takes a lot more direct sun than the rest of the plants. And on top of it, it's in a teeny, teeny four inch pot. I've never repotted this Hoya and I ordered this from Plantarina right after she launched her shop. And it was like such an amazing plant purchase because this Hoya came so healthy and it was growing active new leaves when I ordered it in the mail and it's just been growing so vigorously for me the entire time I've had it and I've never repotted it which I really should do but it's just continued to grow so I don't know I'm just kind of okay with it being a little bit of a struggle plant you'll probably see me repot it sometime kind of soon but um, it's always really thirsty because it's in a really small pot and the soil is filled all the way to the top of the pot line um, so when I try to water it, water spills everywhere. So when I do water it, it just gets like a little bit of water at a time. And so it's more susceptible to burn, um, which is like some of the damage that you see here. Hoyas will tell you when they're thirsty because the leaves will stop feeling super, super hard. Like you can see on this leaf, I'm squeezing it. Like I'm, I'm opening and closing my hand like this and the leaf is not budging. Like if you were to apply pressure, the leaf would snap. But if it does one of these, you see how the leaf is, is squishing and bending and contorting? It means the plant is thirsty. So, sorry Australis, it's always thirsty. I guess I'll, I'll water it again after this. The Hoyas are really great because they're a really easy plant to gauge whether or not it needs water. And if you're not sure, you can wait until it's kind of droopy and they tend to pop back. I mean, I wouldn't wait until the plant is like limp and loses all of its form, but just give the leaves a little bit of a feel. And if they feel limp to you, go ahead and give it some water. But like other plants that are pretty drought tolerant and come with the disclaimer not to overwater them, don't underwater them either. Like when, when it is time for watering day, water them thoroughly. Like don't do one of those like, oh, I'm not sure if you're thirsty or not, so I'm just gonna pour a tiny bit of water in. Don't do that to your Hoyas, they are not gonna like that. Let them dry out and then water them thoroughly and let them dry out again and you will have a happy Hoya collection, at least in my experience. Yeah, this Hoya Australis is growing like crazy. It's really big. It's way too much plant for this little four inch pot, but it's growing all back here. It's choking out some other plants that I tried to put back there. Then we can move down to this shelf. Oh, I guess I should just mention, I have these grow lights that I installed when I set up this shelf system, but I actually don't ever turn these on because it's plenty bright for my Hoyas over here that they really don't need the supplemental lighting. So here, next to my Crimson Queen, I've got my Hoya Macrophylla variegata in a little 
four inch pot and it's a little floppy. It's a little thirsty. Watered it today. Um, but it looks kind of similar at first glance to the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen because it's got this white edge around the leaf margin, um, but it's also got this very pronounced veining and texture on the leaves. The leaves on this one are considerably larger than the ones on the Crimson Queen, although I guess when you see these side by side, they're kind of similar, but macrophylla means big leaf, so, or like big plant, so that's in the name of this one that the leaves do get quite large. You can see there's some peduncles on it right now and it actually flowered for me this spring and I'm ashamed to admit but I didn't even notice until the blooms were mostly gone because they developed back here hiding all the way behind this big clump of leaves and you can see there's some little dried flowers on there still but I actually never really saw what these blooms look like in their full glory because I just somehow completely missed them. Like you can see in all of the foliage here, I just <laughs> didn't even see the blooms. So hopefully next time I'll catch it. But it's growing down here, up here, and through the plant shelf up into the upper level. It's got vines that have come over here into the next plant and, oh, and I see it's, it's down over here too. <laughs> um, holding up some other Hoya. There is a inverted variegated version with the white on the inside and the green on the outer edge, which is also called the Macrophylla variegata. Um, I think this one's sometimes called Albo marginata instead because um, it has white margins. And so Albo means white and marginata means margin. A lot of plants that have this type of variegation, their, their cultivar name is Albo marginata. And then when you have variegation in the center of the leaf as opposed to the outer edge, that one will be called the variegata. So, oh, actually we can just move on to an example of that. So this here, okay, this is the macrophylla, but this one is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. So this one is a variegated Hoya Carnosa, but it has the variegation on the inside of the leaf rather than at the margin. It's always compared to the Crimson Queen because they have similar names, Crimson Queen, Crimson Princess but the Crimson Queen has the white on the outside and the Crimson Princess has the white on the middle. So this plant also has this beautiful little tinge of pink going on right now. Um, and it also has these really beautiful bright pink stems that I think are just so darling. Um, so that one I got as a tiny little cutting and it's grown considerably. It was like, it was just a tiny little two leaf cutting when I first got it. And I've got it in this, four inch pot here. And gosh, I wish I could give you a better view of it, but all my Hoyas are so tangled. So this is what we're working with. So this pink that you see here is something that can develop on the plant in multiple ways. So the Hoyas that I have the, that have white variegation, like the Macrophylla and the Crimson Queen, and then this Crimson Princess, they all naturally have a slight pink tinge to the white areas of the, the leaves when the leaves first develop. So when a new leaf comes out, it usually has a little bit of this pinkness to it. But this pink color can also be brought out more in the plant by giving them a little bit of sun stress, by exposing them to some direct light. That creates a stress condition in the plant, which encourages the plant to create different sets of pigments that allow them to protect themselves from light that's a little bit too harsh. So it is a response to the plant being in an environment that is a little bit less than ideal, but on Hoyas, you can get some really beautiful bright reds and pinks if you put them in the direct sun. I guess I should explain this. If you're not familiar with Hoyas, they have this really weird growth pattern that I used to think was really unattractive. They put out these really long tendrils and then they grow the leaves on them. So if you are new to Hoyas and you see all these tendrils, like those ones back there, don't cut them off because the leaves will eventually grow out of them. Okay, so then over here, I've got this Hoya Wyetii, which has these kind of like longer leaves and it has this black or kind of purple margin at the leaf edge, which sometimes looks a little bit red too. And when the new foliage comes out, it comes out this kind of like light brown color and then it turns a little bit greener. And yeah, I've just got this one in a four inch pot too. And it hasn't grown too much for me. Um, I've noticed that it seems to be a little bit of a slower grower than some of the other Hoyas I have. Um, although it does have this, this long vine out here. <laughs> 
So there is the Hoya Wayetii. Um, it could also be a Hoya Kentiana. I don't really understand what the difference is between them, and I think there isn't really a good way to tell unless it flowers. This plant is also often confused with another Hoya, the Hoya Shepherdii, called the String Bean Hoya, which I actually do have down here. Um, yeah, let's just go to this one now. So this is the Hoya Shepherdii. Uh, sorry, it's so dirty. It's got all of these water marks on it from when I first got it, and I was have been unable to wash them off. I probably should use um, a little bit of lemon juice or something acidic, but I just haven't taken the time to go in here and clean out those water stains. But it would look a lot better if it wasn't so dirty, but that's okay. So this is the Hoya Shepherdii, the string bean Hoya, and it's got these very long leaves. I mean, you can tell that the leaves are much, much longer than on the plant I was just showing you. Which is why it's called the string bean Hoya, because they kind of look like beans. Over here, this plant, let's see if I can pick this up a little bit. This, in this four inch plastic pot, is a Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8. Oops, sorry, this. It's called Crinkle 8 because the leaves have eight crinkles on them. Um, <laughs> if you count the number of like little divots, so I guess it's not true of every single leaf, but in general, they tend to have roughly like eight little crinkles. Um, and this plant definitely is one that can revert to a regular Hoya carnosa if it's not getting a lot of light. And I think you see a little bit of that happening on my plant where the leaves aren't super crinkly, but they still have a really notable kind of interesting texture that makes it look like there might be like peas in there or something, but... <laughs> There, there isn't. So um, this is a really interesting one. I didn't really care about it, but it's been a really vigorous grower in my collection. And I just, um, as it's gotten bigger, I really like the way that the, the leaf texture adds a really interesting contrast into the rest of the Hoyas. Like they just have such personality, the different Hoyas, once you start to get to know them. So there is the Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8. And then over here, this is my Hoya pubicalix, and it's another one that I think is considered like one of the more common Hoyas. It's got a little bit of this splashy silver markings on it. A long time ago, um, I sort of took a risk and ordered from a seller that didn't really have any reviews, and they included a whole bunch of free little cuttings with my order, which was very nice. And this pubicalix was one of them. It was just a tiny little, like I think it had four leaves on it at the time, and now it's gotten a lot bigger. So it's just in a four inch pot back there and it's vining all over the place. And oh, oh wow. I didn't even notice that it was growing back here and this leaf is so big. Wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> that one's doing some cool stuff. And I do have another Hoya pubicalix that I keep in a really low light location, which is crazy and it doesn't really grow. Should I show that one to you? I'll go show that to you. I have this Hoya pubicalix over here that lives like, this is where I keep my dog treats and this is like the front of my apartment. So it's kind of dark and I have this here and it's doing okay. It doesn't really grow. Like it's grown these long tendrils that haven't put out any leaves in months, but it's doing okay in a relatively low light location, like much lower light than I would ever recommend someone to put a Hoya in. Like you can see, I have a snake plant next to it, but I got this for really, really cheap and I just decided that it was gonna live over here and I was gonna see what happens and it's doing okay. So this is a little Hoya Carii, a Hoya heart, and it's just a single leaf cutting and I've got two of these. Um, one came in my year long subscription package and it actually isn't doing as well as this one. I don't know if it maybe got a little bit burnt once. Let me just grab it. I think I like let it get a little bit too dehydrated and unfortunately I think this one is probably gonna die but that one is going strong. Once they start to turn yellow because it's just one single leaf unfortunately there isn't really anything you can do to recover them I don't think. So uh, that's my bad that I let this one go I think a little bit too long without water. And then over here I've got my Hoya Linearis which is like one of my prize Hoyas. I can show you, it starts up here. It's in this six inch plastic pot. And then it just goes down, 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 down,
some some things plugged in. This is where my internet lives. Oh, okay, yeah, look. So this Linearis is just going all over the place, living on my router and, oh, I guess it didn't like going under that shelf. It kind of shriveled up where it lost the light, but oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. This is so messy looking, all right. But anyway, my Hoya Linearis is so long and just been growing and growing and growing like crazy. So this is another one that I got from Plant Arena. And when it arrived, it was already probably like this long. It was a really, really amazing purchase. It was kind of expensive, but it was totally worth it in my opinion. And it has grown completely explosively. So this is the Hoya Linear Linearis. <laughs> So this is the Hoya Linearis, and it's called that because it's got these linear leaves. And not only are they linear, but let me see if I can zoom in. They're extremely fuzzy. You see the leaf texture? They're really soft. And I didn't realize until I got this plant what a joy it is to just touch it. It's so nice and soft. Okay, so this one is my Hoya Obovada, and it's called a Hoya obovada because it has obovate leaves, which means um, shaped like an oval. So this obovada is the splash version, which means that it has this splashy silver pattern on it. And it's a really, really cool one. These leaves are really big. I got this from Pistols Nursery in Oregon, which is a little bit pricier, but this plant is one of the healthier plants that I've ever received in the mail. It is so big now. It really took off once I moved into this apartment and put it here in this really bright light spot with the bright indirect light. It's just been loving life. So this obovada has so many vines in the pot um, and they're growing all over the place. They're growing like crazy. So I've got one vine going over here through this philodendron. This is a philodendron imperial red, by the way. Um, and it's completely like, <laughs> my Hoyas are growing on it in this, this pot. <laughs> it fell over back there and the Hoyas are holding on to this plant. So I've got this whole little ecosystem happening here. This vine here goes up through the top and then comes forward here and is growing this way. And it's holding on to this crimson princess and macrophylla. Some of these vines are making me think that it's turning into like a Hoya carii because you see this vine up here, um, all of the leaves on it are heart-shaped. So that's really interesting to me. I didn't expect that to happen and I've been watching this progress over many months. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if the Hoya carii was originally like a mutated Hoya obovada, but um, it's got these heart-shaped leaves now. So I don't really know. <laughs> it's like two plants in one. Um, like this vine is doing that a little bit too, but this vine isn't really. I just noticed that my Hoya obovada has a little peduncle on it. So the peduncle is, um, in the houseplant community, peduncle is terminology that usually only applies to Hoyas. It's the little, um, flower stem, the initial flower stem that will appear. And I just noticed that my obovada sprouted a little peduncle right here. So it's this little, this little nub that you see there. It's actually got little flower buds on it. Hey guys, it's Editing Caitlin. I just wanted to hop on here for a second because something super exciting happened. The Hoya obovada bloomed. So it's been Ooh, it's been it's been over three weeks since I filmed the footage that you guys are seeing as the main part of this video. Um, it's just been taking me forever to get this done because I've been trying to learn a new editor and my marketing graphic design job really picks up in the second half of the year and I've been trying to finish up my horticulture certificate and I just had a lot going on these days. But this Hoya has had a lot going on these days too, as in it has opened up the little blooms that were forming on that peduncle that I was showing you. So let's take a look. Okay. Look, look at those blooms. And then one of the other things that I just wanted to talk about was this splash texture. I didn't realize until kind of recently that the splash on here um, isn't 
quite the same as like variegation. It's actually due to a little bit of like an air pocket. This splashiness, I can show you something that when I fi first figured this out, I was extremely alarmed. If you rub on it, it kind of goes away. Do you see that? And it made me think that it, this actually didn't have splash, but powdery mildew or something like that. And I started to freak out about it until I realized that this is due to this funny air pocket that will form just underneath the surface of the leaf and it makes it have this, this whitewashed appearance. Um, so if you do press on it or rub it with some force, it will change the appearance of the splash and make it kind of go away. Um, I don't really know what happens if you like vigorously try to rub away all of the splash, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, and then the last few Hoyas I have to show you, I think I have have three left. So this one is a single leaf cutting of a Hoya latifolia. And the latifolia is also known as the dinner plate Hoya because the leaves supposedly get as large as dinner plates. And I guess your girl's on a diet because my plate is pretty small. So <laughs> I ordered this almost two years ago and I think they sent me a single leaf it just hasn't done anything the whole time I've, I've had it. It's got this big root system that it's grown out. It's got some water stains. The leaf is still really tough, um, but it just hasn't done anything <laughs> the whole time I've had it. So this is kind of like a Hoya carii, I guess, where it's just a single leaf that's just living just like this. Cause I would have expected, you know, it's been almost two years and this hasn't grown. I don't think it's going to do anything. So I'm kind of bummed about this because I paid for it and was hoping for it to turn into a plant. Um, I mean, I guess it's a plant, but it's not growing any more plant. So I don't know how long this is going to last in my collection, but this is supposedly a Hoya latifolia. <laughs> it kind of looks like a Hoya macrophylla to me, to be honest. Okay, it's editing Caitlin again, and it turns out that I was right, kind of. Um, it is a Hoya macrophylla, or actually the Hoya macrophylla has been reclassified as Hoya latifolia, and Hoya macrophylla is no longer technically a correct accepted name. Um, and along with Hoya polystachia, which I had heard of before, and I'll pop the name up here. It's also apparently a Hoya latifolia. So just a heads up, it is what it is. Um, and then this here is my little Hoya rotundiflora. This Hoya is so cool. The rotundiflora has these rectangular leaves. You see what a funny shape they are? So I got this from Andy's orchids um, like a while ago and it took forever for it to start growing for me. And I think it was because I was kind of neglecting it. So as you can see, this one is not in a pot. It is growing mounted with some moss onto just a little piece of like wood particle board or something. This Hoya Rotunda Flora was a little bit hard for me to figure out the care when I first got it because I basically have to run this under the sink like every other day, otherwise it doesn't grow. So it recently has started to grow for me and it started putting out some tiny new leaves, like this one. It's a really, really cute plant and I just think it's really cool. And I've been meaning to unmount it and pot it up into some actual potting mix. They do actually grow semi-epiphytically and epiphytically in nature, which means that they grow attached to other plants. Um, not as parasites, but just for structure, and they can grow their roots onto other plants as well. Yeah, I've got this Hoya rotundiflora on here, and it's just so cute. This is probably like my specialist Hoya, or like my rarest one. Okay, so this is my Hoya retusa. So this one is a really kind of cool, interesting Hoya that, um, I think used to be like pretty common and easy to find. And then during the big like plant boom, I don't know what happened, but this became like a rare Hoya and prices on this totally skyrocketed, which is crazy because I remember I used to see these all the time in plant shops being sold, you know, like alongside Pothos and stuff like that for like totally reasonable prices. 
Um, and then they disappeared when the plant boom happened and then reappeared sometimes with like triple digit price tags for a plant in a hanging pot. And it was completely crazy to me. Um, and I didn't even really understand why they got so expensive. But anyway, this is a Hoya Retusa and I was able to get one relatively recently at a pretty good price because of my plant shop discount. It has just absolutely taken off with growth in the time that I've had it. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a close up of the foliage. It's really cool. It's got these like, it's like a vine of like fireworks, if that makes any sense. They have this, they vine out like a regular Hoya, and then they grow these little clumps of leaves. And if you ever wanna propagate this Hoya, what you can do is just take one of the clumps. Do I put them by my face? You can see them. Oh, okay, this is gonna work. So you can take one of the clumps. <laughs> Caitlin does YouTube. I'm not using my hand, I'm using my face as the background. So <laughs> you, can, you can see how they've got like little bundles of leaves and you can take an entire clump and chop it off and there's like a whole bunch of little nodes right in the center where the leaves grow and you can pot them individually and then grow more plants from it. Um, but this plant is just really fun. They've got this little, this little nub at the end of each leaf that's like a little bit rounded looking and it reminds me of the shape of like when you, when you draw a bone like on a skeleton it's got this little little nub on there. Anyway, this is a plant that I think is really cool and I keep it hanging up in my hallway with really, really bright light and it's doing a lot. So this is a really cool Hoya and if you're able to get your hands on a Hoya Retusa that's like kind of bigger, um, once it starts to fill out and establish, it's just such a cool plant and it's really, um, really a vigorous, tough grower, very robust. So. Hoya Retusa, definitely one of my Hoya favorites. All right, everyone, that is it for my Hoya collection. The more I talk about Hoyas, the more I like them. They're really cool, they're really cool. I would love to hear from you on what some of your favorite Hoyas are or what Hoyas you think I should add to my collection or even where some of your favorite places are to buy Hoyas online, um, just because I can see myself getting really, really into it. Um, so I don't know if I'm quite there yet, but every time I start like spending time with my Hoyas, I'm like, oh yeah, I need some more of these. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you have any Hoya tips for me or Hoyas that you think I absolutely need to add to my collection, um, or if you hate Hoyas and don't see the appeal, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And I just wanna say thank you so, so much for watching. And I hope everyone is having a really great week and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. This is embarrassing. My Hoya collection is also um, my dust collection. They're really dusty because I've never moved them.